Good morning. Why don't we all stand up? Take a seventh inning stretch here. We've been sitting for quite a while. Wiggle, shake, stretch, look around at, like at your neighbor. Shake hands with a partner there. Why don't we improvise for a moment? We've been getting some great ideas from other speakers about uh, how we can fix the world. Let's do a word at a time sentence where we, uh, we finish each other's sentence by adding the next most obvious word. And if, you're, if you don't have a partner, turn to a, a, a pair that does so that you're three and you can do this three at a time. So when I say go, let's start with the phrase what the world needs is, and keep going until you've found a solution. Okay? Go. Great. Solve the world's problems right there. Wonderful. You can sit down, thank you. See, you are all improvisers. In fact, if you think about it, life is an improvisation. But it may not always be a comedy. And while improv naturally leads to the thought of comedy, the other side of improv training and ideas is that improv is great common sense. And the study of improv can um, have a number of unexpected benefits. Improv is a way to deal with the unexpected at all levels. Charles Darwin said in the long history of humankind and animal kind, those who have learned most effectively to collaborate and improvise have prevailed. Survival. It's useful to have tools for that. In addition to survival, these days improvisation is being used widely by businesses and corporations, educational institutions, as a way of dealing with innovation, getting new ideas. It's one of the tools of creativity. A third application of improvisation practices has to do with our social togetherness. We, we're losing the ability to be with each other face to face, to really listen to one another, to pay attention, and to be able to support one another's ideas. Last year I was invited by Jesse Kornbluff to um, take part in an article in the Sunday New York Times opinion section. The article was titled, What I Would Do If I Were President. And he asked uh, 10 citizens from different walks of life in science and authors what they would do, and my response was, if I were president, I would invite both chambers of, of uh, Congress to meet with the judiciary and me for a week-long improvisation retreat. We'd spend that week saying yes to each other, building on one another's ideas, solving problems, telling stories together, making mistakes falling down, supporting each other, but working on the agreement muscle. Of course, um, my contribution to that article was likely there for its, uh, for its um, smile value, but there's a kernel of truth in it. When we practice improvisation, when we use the rules and the tools of improv, there's an opening to discover how to communicate better how to listen, how to get things done. My own path to improv came, uh, I didn't seem to be a natural improviser to begin with. I love to follow a script and paint by the numbers, do it all just the right way. And having followed the script, followed dutifully what I thought others wanted of me, painted inside the lines very well, I got to the tenure review at Stanford, got the news, Sorry. It just didn't make any sense. But the lesson I learned at that juncture was an important one. I'd been doing it all by the numbers, what everybody else thought I should do, but I had not been listening to my own voice. I had not been paying attention to that part of my own spirit 
that needed to be shared. The reason that I'm here. Enter improvisation. And the wonderful thing happened is instead of my career being over, I got a better job at Stanford University. Go figure. I think it was because I was following my own voice. Started studying Eastern religion, traveling, and doing Tai Chi, and this led me to a wonderful teacher of improvisation. And improvisation entered the picture to help me solve a problem at Stanford with students who were very good at following a script, but who also had not tuned into their own voices. I was then invited to teach for continuing studies at Stanford, adults there, and discovered that improvisation was a marvelous tool to help adults do a great variety of things. The um, where was I? A uh, tool to do a great variety of things. The adults there are. Um, oh, so <laughs> this led me to write my book. Write a book about about these experiences and how the the laws and techniques of improv can be life lines. The book was titled Improv Wisdom, Don't Prepare, Just Show Up, and people read the book, took improv classes, and began reporting back their findings and, and how they used it. Improv seemed to solve some of the most unlikely problems. I heard from a woman who said she's using the principles of improv to train caregivers for Alzheimer's disease. I met a woman who also is using improvisation to train homeland security officials who will be dealing with first responders in a crisis. I was recently invited by a, a Roshi of a Zen temple in Mountain View to do a workshop on improvisation to help meditators there um, develop their meditation techniques and their mindfulness. Improv is all about paying attention, noticing what's going on, and adjusting to reality. The design school at Stanford routinely uses improvisation techniques to um, deal with the issues of creativity and innovation. The law school will, will be offering a course in improvisation and the law. And a favorite application that has um, a letter I heard from a woman who said, you, you may be surprised in uh, how improvisation has helped me personally. I took your class a number of years ago, and when I woke up after seven weeks in a coma, I was unable to move and unable to speak, and nothing from my past, from psychology or philosophy or even spiritual practice, seem to surface or make any sense. But the principles of improv came to me in that moment. I could just show up. I could pay attention. I could notice what was going on. I could, I could look at what others were doing for me. I could try things. I could make mistakes and fall down. I could, in a sense, be, become part of the story. The rules and tools of improv were a marvelous lifeline in this sort of um, unimaginable situation that I found myself in. So what do improvisers do? They say yes to life. They build upon the ideas of others. They work realistically to accept things as they are. They make their partner look good, and they act without a plan. When we improvise our life, adventures can occur. We can step forward past the unrealistic hope of never making a mistake. I'd like to end with a story about uh, something that happened in Manhattan 
during the 80s, this was reported in the, in the a Times article about uh, things that happened in New York. Apparently, a well-dressed woman stepped out of a subway car in 42nd Street in the middle of rush hour traffic and walked about 10 feet out of the, out of the train, and she looked down, and holding in her right hand was a single leather glove. Huh. Noticing her mistake, she turned and looked back into the car that she had just exited, and there was its mate sitting on the seat that she had just vacated. So without a hesitation, she tossed her glove back onto the seat next to the one she had lost, just as the doors of the subway were closing. May all of your improvisations turn out well. Consider improv as a lifeway.